and welcome to another Retro Robin Show with me, Wayne, and of course, Emo there, my AI, who likes to dance to AY Robot. And any minute now, Emo hopefully will start busting some moves. Well, we've got a jam packed show for you today, we've got a bit of everything on it. We've got new Spectrum games to take a look at. We've got a Commodore game, which is also a very classic game on the Spectrum, but I found the Commodore version and I've given it a play. And hopefully if we get enough time, we'll put a couple of Commodore games into play. And we've got a Spectrum Next game. And as always, we'll start with our re-reviews. We're going to go back to issue number 7 of Crash from 1984. This issue would have cost you 75 pence. Wow, value for money. Packed full of goodness. And in the early issues of Crash, usually to get a Crash Smash you had to have 90% or over. See, the most fancy then. Way to go, Emo. <laughs> right on cue. But that was, genuinely speaking, 90% or over gave you a Crash Smash. But in some of the early issues, 88% and anything above 85 was a Crash Smash, so it obviously changed towards the... Uh, after around about 8 or 9 this year, a Crash Smash was recognised as 90% over. And more on that in a moment. As always, if you like today's show, please give me a thumbs up and as I'd love to get a comment off you. Remember to leave comments in the comments below, as always, if you'd like to... Uh, if you see something you don't know about, or you want to ask a question, or you indeed want to make a statement about the show, I'm always happy to try and get back to as many of you as possible. So please a little message on the screen, please subscribe. For those of you who watch the show and haven't subscribed, I'm trying to get to the big five, the big 500, I'm not far away. And thank you to everybody who recently has subscribed to the show. It's great to have you on board, and I hope I've... Well, I hope you find it entertaining, and, uh, well, you won't find it educational, you're in the wrong place for that, but, uh, you can have a good laugh at me, <laughs> and a good chuckle at Emo as well. Well then, should we take a look at this magazine cover? Indeed we shall. Emo, change the screen. Checking out the crash cover then, as you can see, we've got a, well, what looks to be a Martian planet that's sort of like a beach. Um, you've got the little cuddly crash sprites, shall we say, those little creatures. That was fe recently featured in a Matt Langley uh, version for Crash, a tribute to Roger and Ollie, a cave rescue type game. Which hopefully will be coming out with Crash on a SD card. We can plug into your... Um, who knows? Well, that's work in action. We'll come back to that in a moment. What do I think about that cover? Well, it's not the greatest cover I've seen. I do like the coloured spectrum uh, tassels around the umbrella. Um, and he's there sitting reading while he's got his spectrum, his computer and his briefcase there. Um, yeah, 75 pence, that magazine. We're going to have to check out now uh, the first of today's Crash Smashes in it. This one is not a Crash Smash. I just thought I'd have a brief look at uh, Automania. But it is a Crash Smash. That got 88%. But we're going to come to that in a moment, hopefully, if we get time. We're going to try and get two of them in today. Um, but the one I want to have a look at first is... Cosmic Kanga! Yeah, that one there, as you can see, we've got some uh, interesting looking ratings there. Um, I would say, use of computer, 79%. Graphics, 87%. Playability, 89%. Uh, Getting started 93%, addictive qualities at 88%, value for money at 89%, would have cost you £5.95. Uh, the producer was, uh, well, I'll tell you that in a minute. Overall 88%, shall we have a look to see this game in action, what the loading screen looks like? There we are, loading screen right up and right on cue. Hopefully this is going as well as I think it's going. Um, yeah. A kangaroo with boxing gloves and a jetpack. Rather interesting uh, loading screen. Bit of colour clash there uh, between the C and the A. The red of the A has overlapped the C and the A has overlapped the K slightly. So they could have probably left that black border effect around it, if you know what I mean, and avoided that. Bit of lazy graphics. It's amazing what they can do. Um, 
we've clever placement of paper and ink and uh, stuff like that. As you can see, we're loaded. Great, that's good timing as well. We'll start by having a look at the demo mode. Oh, Pauline Bleeper tunes. Right, he's going to bounce through and you just collect those certain objects, avoid bombs and anything else that moves, because anything else that moves will kill you. <laughs> um, yeah, so be careful of that because he's going to do your own. Yeah, told you. Um, there are various different types of levels on this. It's not only a side scrolling game, it's an upward scrolling game. Um, level design basically go inside with there's a desert. I mean, it's um, nice graphics, but avoid the, the skulls and the bombs. And uh, he's, dead. he's dead. He's dead. The way this game works is you either press up to bounce up higher, or you press down to to do a little jump. But as you go left, you go. You sort of do an inertia movement. You can have small or large. Anyway, I've had enough of listening to that. Should we get this game and play and see what I can do with it? You want to go for two, Gemston? I could try a keyboard, but I haven't got a clue what the keys are. And I'm just going to pair it up and start the game. And yes, you have to put up with that tune starting every time. You can fire. I'm hoping I will fire. Okay, so, yep. Yeah, I'm bouncing forwards. I'm holding backwards. Or pressing up gives you a bigger bounce. Oh, I just about avoided that. I was hoping to land on that platform. Oh no, the bomb's got me. I'm going to set a score here, and uh, if you do get a chance to play it yourselves, uh, if I do inspire you to give one of these other older games a go, see if you can beat my high score, and believe me, it shouldn't be too hard. You can only fire one bullet at a time. I'm doing rather well. Oh. Wow, that's an amazing score for me. 600! It's not as easy as I'm making it look. I'm making it look easy. Me, never. <laughs> Game over. Okay. Well, do I agree? Was it a 88% crash mash? Well, I don't think it was a crash mash. Um, it's okay, the game. It's okay. But I would have only given it a 7 out of 10. Um, Cosmic Kanga. Maybe I should issue Tez a challenge. Tez, see if you can beat that. I don't know, that score was not bad, was it 650 or something like that? I thought I was doing quite well. Didn't manage to get to the end of the level, so the levels are quite quite long. Quite a tough and quite a hard game. Um, it can be very frustrating. But, all in all, graphically it wasn't, wasn't hopeless. There wasn't a lot going on on the screen. <laughs> was it a game that you owned? Do you have the original copy? Did you play it back in the day? And perhaps I've reminded you of it. Let's get rid of that dreadful peeper tune. Deadly, deadly, deadly. Yeah, we know that. I found that out by experience. 7 out of 10 then for me. That's what I'm going to call that one. Remember, as always, I much appreciate it if you leave your comments in the comments below and I will try and get back to you, of course. Great tune coming from the Toast Rack there, one of my favourites actually, AY tunes of uh, a couple of years ago, from Nixie and the Seeds of Doom. A great platforming game. 
full throttling. We've got this one to have a look at. Would it cost you £6.95? Use of computer, 94%. Graphics, 88%. Playability, 95%. Getting started, 92%. Addictive qualities, 85%. Value for money, 90%. Well, actually, the last game was £5.95. Cosmic Ganga, well, this one overall rating then uh, was 91%, so indeed this would have been a crush smash in any era. But was it as good? What do I think of that loading screen? Well, that is a phenomenally brilliant bit of artistic work. It says everything you've done there, right down to the shadow, to the, you can see the bike is leaning, it's really cleverly done. Uh, right. Micromania, uh, again, great software house from back in this day, and uh, I'm just loving that loading screen, you know. In fact, I'm going to get a lot of loading screens printed onto A4 paper, then printed onto uh, wallpaper that I might actually put up in this room. That would be a fantastic thing to make us uh, the retro ready room, I call it. Welcome to Planet Retro, <laughs> or shall we say, my imagination. The only thing left to do now is to get this game loaded and give it a play. Let's have a look. Now, there's a um, demonstration mode? Is that? No. Oh, we can change. You can change track for a demo, uh, from Donington. Let's have a look at one change track. I want something simple. <laughs> I know what I'll do. What change it now? Is it QAO, PM, or ZX, or is it arrow keys? I forgot. Or is it indeed the Kenson joystick? What I need to do is select joystick, don't I? So, um, ah, right, so you use space to get into whatever. Ah, Sweden, why not? Um, right, five change for controls. Uh, we can have all the usual ProTech. Interface 2, and indeed, I believe it, Kempston Joystick. So we need to start, 3, 2, 1, and away we go. Oh, pretty easy to control actually, and when you crash you just end up losing your speed down to zero, so you don't have to start all over again. Yes, I've got it in the proper aspect ratios today. <laughs> Well, this game at least. The Spectrum next game, I'm not going to do that with. Um, I just want to catch one of them up. <laughs> yeah, if you hit one, you lose all your speed. And I have not played this in ages. I'm pouting on off the track like mad. All in all though, it, it does feel fast, it's really hard to, to stay in a straight line, I'd probably be better on the keyboard, I was almost catching somebody up there. It's like a little flickery effect isn't it, as, as I catch them up, you can see the bikes in the distance, they're just lines, they get larger and larger and larger. And now I've, like, now I've hit the back of him, I'm going to lose all my speed. I mean, this is an early racing game, so it's not exactly going to look graphically as brilliant as some of the later ones, like Chase HQ, and, uh, well, even Outrun, although there's some people have got a love-hate relationship with Outrun for the Spectrum. Um, for an arcade conversion, give it a chance, I thought the A1 music was not too bad, um, and I thought it was an okay play, but what do I think of this one? Look, I'm overtaking things, you ought to be ashamed of you, I'll crash into him. We can do a bit better than this, can we? Come on, can we keep keep up with them? Live play. I don't think I took one corner yet. Well, I haven't come off. Position forty. Come on, I want to at least get that into thirty-nine. Oh man. <laughs> Mission 39! Oh, come on, 39! Yay! Oh, hell, I've just hit the back of him. <laughs> you 
know, I'm not so sure I like the fact that they're the same colour. They're a flickering green. It's a good way of avoiding colour clash, I suppose, because there's green and black involved only ever on the bottom of the screen. It's a clever bit of coding, really. Uh, in in, in of a bit of coding, if you know what I mean. Um, there's a couple of flickering graphics giving the wheel uh, look like it's got tread on it and they're flowing around fast. I mean, 37, 36 now! <laughs> Here you are, out, 34. How many laps is that? Three, four? Oh, well, there goes my position in the uh, race. I keep it in thing. It really is quite a busy road, this. You'd think it was the M5 Junction 6 on Rush Hour. Come on, we can do it. I think we're at the end of our final lap, aren't we? I'm not sure I like Sweden. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to play this all day. If I don't catch anything up, I don't catch anything up. Crashed into the back of it. Yeah, okay, so that was uh, a crash mash at 91%. And... Um, Considering the year and considering people were new to programming these things, you remember the Spectrum came out in 1982, uh, 1984 they've had two years to perfect their trade. It all depends on how many racing games were before it. I know that Pole Position was an early game and one, one of my favourites was Pole Position. Um, although I don't agree with Crash on this occasion, I think it was an 80% uh, game. Uh, I would have said 80%, an 8 out of 10 from me. But still a fun play, very difficult game, I enjoyed it. As always, please leave your comments in the comments below. Well, what do we have here? Well, we know what we have here because some of you are on my uh, Facebook group, the Retro Robins group, uh, probably see me um, give a preview of play of this fantastic game for the Spectrum and uh, not too shabby even for the Commodore. I think what I need to do actually is because Emo is overlapping my picture. Are you here, man? Let's just make him a little bit smaller, okay? And boom, there we go. Just reduce the size of Emo a little bit there. Same demo as you got on the Spectrum with the two Monty Moles dancing there. Monty giving his little bit of a break dance. Slightly different tones and colours. One's shaded, one is not. One is bright, one is not. Nice looking game then. Okay. Confession to make, I have got the cheats on this. However, I've completed this game on the Spectrum, never played it before in the Commodore, but I have completed this game on the Spectrum and it took a long time to do. Um, but, let's see how it compares. Well obviously you're not going to get the colour clash, but this is quite, well, this is quite high res graphics for the Commodore, isn't it? Um, Everyone hates the old presses, don't they? They used to be uh, a little bit fearful of them, but if you wait for them to kill you, they will. I'm loving the graphics of it. Because 
Yes, it is colourful. Let me turn it down, touch. I think that's a bit loud. Um, the colours aren't quite as vibrant and as bright as the Spectrum, but the game playability itself is. Oh, yes, yeah, even got the spin. Whenever we get the sound effects that you get on the 1 to 8K, we get the sound samples on the uh, 1 to 8, you change through rooms, don't you? Sort of like the voice bits. That remains to be seen, but I'll. Uh, didn't think I was going to get up there very easily. No, because normally it'd say... It'd say some words, wouldn't it? Uh, it hasn't done that on this occasion. Um, ooh. I'm drunk. And for someone like me, that's quite unusual. Oh. One of these makes me bounce. That one. Oh, that's opposite direction. The problem is with the opposite direction, you know. You shouldn't be able to walk through them. That's your extra life up there. Let's grab that. Let's do something we shouldn't be able to do. <laughs> Good thing about Monty Mole games is you don't ever walk too far, do you? And what I want to try and do now is I'm going to try and get to the point where you get to fly the the plane. This is a bit tricky on this one. So I've got one air ticket and as you can see the air tickets on these ones they're mounted sort of a... Uh... Oh dear. I think you can see it. Oh wow look at the plane flight on this one. Them clothes are shooting by, I'm liking this. Yeah, you can destroy as many of these as you want by using your... You know, if you actually try that in a plane, you'd probably crash and die, but you know. What we would uh, accept as the norm as children is unbelievable. Where's my guns? I'd rather shoot him. Come here, plane. There we go, that's the Eiffel Tower. An interesting one, we can go through down here, shall we? Oh, that's something we need to try as well, see if that platform collapses. Yep, it does all the usual stuff. I haven't collected the Mona Lisa, have I? Will I, do it? I will do it in a minute, that's for sure. Looks like you can carry a total of four items. Um, those little plimps where you can see the air tickets on and where you carry those particular items. So when I collect this, uh, I forgot what that is meant to be. I always used to call it uh, the Mona Lisa. I don't know what it is actually meant to be. Um, I'm sorry to say. But there you go, it's on there. I've collected it. Because uh, I think in France you're meant to collect all the berries, aren't you, for the extra bones? And, uh, oh, tricky, tricky indeed. I've missed it three times. Oh dear, that's all by jumping through the through the uh, thing. Berry up there, I'll try and click that and then we'll uh, move on with the show. Remember the Eiffel Tower was one for you for a long time. I wondered what I didn't realize you could go through this gap and this gap here. Can't collect anything else, but there we go. There's a berry bonus points for collecting those, of course. Get to the top of the tower. 
Well, I have to say I'm very impressed with that for the Commodore. I love the soundtrack. Is it as good as the Yagway? It's different, it's better in certain ways, but it's hard to break that nostalgic bug that I've got for the original soundtrack that is on the Spectrum. But this is brilliant too. And uh, what a fantastic game. So if you've got a Commodore 64, I highly recommend if you haven't played this for a platformer, it's certainly worth a play. It was brilliant on the Spectrum and indeed it is as brilliant as it was on the Spectrum. It is also really brilliant for the Commodore 2. Brilliant game, absolutely. Do you agree? As always, leave your comments in the comments below. check this one out for the Commodore 64 by Mastertronic. I've played the Spectrum version and I thought well why not give the Commodore version a play. I have played it on the Commodore Confession and I will be using a cheat mode from 1986. Um, it's a top down bird's eye view type shoot em up a bit like uh, Mando uh, or shall we say um, Rambo, Rambo 2. I actually like Rambo 2, it's pretty good on the Spectrum. There is uh, good SID music in it, but it starts off a little bit slowly, and uh, I'll tell you what's impressing. You have to work your way up the screen, shooting anything that comes towards you um, as quickly as you can. Pattern recognition as well helps, because they do tend to come in from the certain uh, big bonuses for certain kills. The SID tune to start with is, is a bit dull. Um, Shall we say impresses me about the game of the different colours of the sprites to be fair. You know, you've got so many uh, different jackets, grey jackets, green jackets, white jackets, blue jackets, red and, and you know, so you get a you feel like you've got loads of different characters on. And there's quite a number of sprites actually. I didn't think the Commodore would angle more than three or four moving characters uh, on the screen at once, but in this game, it breaks all the rules because there are quite quite a lot, a number of characters on the screen at once. So yeah, at the moment you can probably see around about four, five. The game itself, I wasn't a, a big fan of it. I preferred the freedom of um, Rambo, you know, where you were in a field. Obviously not with the weapons you've got here. Once you reach the crossroads, the idea is you will get a swarm of bad guys come down. Um, let's get him first. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, right. Here they come. A big load of them. Oh, I've shot the girl and I'm supposed to shoot him. Well, I've got him as well. Um, well, to be honest, um, for the game that I've not seen before on the Commodore, I gave it a quick play and I thought, yeah, it's not bad. It's pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with it. So uh, I'm going to give that a... Seven and a half out of ten. One for the coming all for you to give a go, baby. Um, SWAT. A Spectrum one was pretty good, but coming all one was, I would say, slightly better. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. I've seen it reviewed. There's a few little things there. Map Stars Arcade's even got yourself a little advert on there. What is amazing. <laughs> We should take out the super fans. Give me a chance to read that. And we've done the crates, have we? Yep. Yeah. Okay, settings, let's have a look what we can do with settings. We don't want to change any settings, we're just going to play the game. Um, straight away, great opening intro, love the uh, the design of the little ship there. Uh, just uh, drifting through space, as you do. Um, great voice sample as well. 
Now, the way to play this game is you get three buttons. You've got your two fire buttons, but if you hold C, uh, when we play it, I'll tell you now. By holding C down, it pauses the game itself, and you're able to ch choose uh, your power-ups. So, for instance, you've got two available on the demo mode, which you can now uh, download from, I believe, Spectrum Next website. You can get the demonstration game. Um, I'll get back in touch with you. I'll actually leave a link down below where you can download the demo game for your next or for your C Spec emulation to give it to game a go. Um, music by Richard Faulkner. Uh, fantastic uh, tune there as well. So we're going to give this a play. Level 1 loading. Takes a little bit to load up. Not too bad, but. It is quite a large game file, so imagine what the complete game, you're going to get a lot of value for your money. Now, so far the flagship game for the Spectrum Next, to me, is Delta Shadow. It was an absolutely brilliant game. Get ready and watch me die a lot. By doing the long hold on the button, there you go. See, I can now choose which weapon I want. I want to, when you click to fly over that, I'm going to get the circle. Click those things. Fantastic looking game. Reminds me a little bit of our time. In fact, it's uh, probably based on our time. So you don't climb into the top and bottom of the uh, the uh, the scenery. Oh, the bullet got me last minute there, but I have got to another section. So you don't start right at the start. You will start from that pre section you've got to, um, as you can see. So that's good, but you do lose your power ups. Got my main weapon back. They're all firing cigars, aren't they? Ooh, we'll see if I can get to the end of the level. I doubt it. Another change of sprites. Music's quite freaky in the background, but it's not overpowering, which I like. And, uh, whoa! Trying to avoid the bullets, I ended up crashing into the background. I'm not very good at this. <laughs> but we practice like any game, you get better, don't you? So, um. Yeah, the music's got a great intensity to it. Helps to get the right type of peril for each situation. to stick with his weapon at the moment. Oh, oh it's inertial is a problem. It's really slow moving. Really slow moving. Your ship doesn't move too fast and that's part of the problem with my gameplay. So I'm expecting to dart up and down the screen pretty quickly. Um, but it doesn't move quite as fast as the R-type character. Short presses gives you a decent uh, weapon power up though, no doubt about that. Oh, I was collecting that and I missed out there, so um, how many lives have I got left? It doesn't matter actually because you've got endless amounts of continues on the demo mode, but uh, yeah, so 
you get a small invincibility to start with. You know when you actually start up, you stay invincible for a certain amount of seconds before it's... So, if you do get, you know, a bit of leniency there. Like, question mark, hold the seat. Choose which weapon you want to be by pressing the direction. I've only got the choice of two in the demo uh, unit, so... And then when you fly over that, you've got that weapon that you require. So yeah, it's pretty simple to understand. Let's see if we can go a bit further. That's it, I've got the hang of it now, who's staying in the centre of the screen, keep firing and hope to dodge everything. Oh, it's getting a bit tighter. Which weapon do I want? I've got, I've got this one anyway, so I, I, I'm going to keep with this one. Oh, look, we got so far! We'll start there! No! <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, um, yeah. Do you start from the start with a continue? No, I think you start from where you got to. Yeah. I like that. I like. I like the big O. Weaving too quickly, weaving too quickly. A couple more goes in and then we'll call it there. And I'll tell you what I think about this. It. Absolutely amazing looking game. It is recreating that feel of our type for me. And it's also re recreating the fact that I'm a little bit rubbish at it. I like the coat down. I do. I like the coat down. You don't have to continue. Should we hear the sound sample again? Yeah, why not? Well, for the great side scrolling shoot em up with fantastic graphics, a brilliant sound effect, a great backing track at the bottom there. Uh, presentation is pretty, pretty impressive, including the uh, little logos at the start, which builds you into the game itself. What do I actually think of the game? Well, there's nothing to really bug me other than the fact I just wish the ship would move a little bit quicker you know it just a little bit slower moving it's almost like driving a a 1.1 car when you're used to a three litre uh, you know it's it's probably not a bad thing it's something you've got to get used to but I like the fact that it's graphically fantastic the power-ups do actually work it's a clever idea to give you time to choose which weapon you want to go to rather that you know it stops and pauses the whole universe to give you the chance to select one option but then you've still got to get that option uh, marks out of 10 well it's new it's not finished but from what I can see that's got to be a retro robin special it's a full 10 out of 10 top mark for that well done team for creating that and i highly insist that anybody who gets a chance to play this demo play the demo and eventually why not become a super fan get the actual game itself um for the spectrum next or the ingo clone or even if you're playing it on emulation it's a great play indeed what do you say emo you any good at this no i don't think he cares Something a little different now, a bit of blue notes, you're this character here and you've got to go and activate your notes, oh. it's an inertia game, it's a well done inertia game, 
Once you've activated your notes, you've got a certain amount of time to collect all those notes before they reset themselves. If you fall down to the bottom, there is no way of getting to the top. So basically what you need to do is you need to collect those notes in the right sequence and the right order as quick as possible without running off the platform too quickly. Remember you need to follow that for instance is deaf because I fell off. You need to watch the sequence of the bad tape there. It looks like a tape with noise. Whether that's what it's meant to be or not. I know he's going to go across and he did indeed and he called me out. In fact my own app I'm going away. Right, okay, got one collected. Getting closer. Oh, I fell off the edge. Oh, it's annoying this game. And uh, once you've once you die, you die good, good. And uh, you also run out of time. I can't believe that. This is the opening screen. And it starts with a great tune, of course. QAOP and space if you want to use the keyboard. Or, as indeed I am using the joystick, um, I will use the chemistry. So you can jump up here. That activates the notes and change controls, or you basically jump to play. And you can hear the countdown. So give it a go, let's give it a play, and let's give it a rating. Starts you off with this little introduction. That is easy to do. And that's what you've basically got to do between every level. Then there's this level, which is take a dive. Um, so activate the notes. Remember, you've only got a certain amount of time in order to collect the notes. Um, that's too late, I'm afraid. I will not make those last three notes in time. You'll hear it one, two, and three, and it resets itself. That wasn't too bad that time round. I managed to get a lot, so. What I need to do, whoa, I'm wasting time. It's not easy to control, the inertia is quite tricky to be honest. Oh no, I've not done it. You get three clicks and on the third click if you haven't got all the notes, I'm afraid it's back to the drawing board. And you can see the little time in the corner there running down which probably means I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it because I won't have enough time. And then you will lose a life. <laughs> just looks like it's dreadful the way he gets a big shock and he goes, ah! Oh. Right, this time I'm going to get past this level. I promise thee I will get past this level if my name is not Tez Rowland. Tez, you gave some stick today. I do apologise. It's all love, bro. I'm not going to make it. Come on, come on, go, 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 go. Two, three, oh. I hate you. Well, that, that's got a chance. That's got a chance. If you can take out as many notes as you can, you've got a chance of doing this. Can we do this? Come on, can we do this? Oh, I missed it. No, I missed it. One, two, three. Goodbye. And I'm out of time as well. Ah, uh, there's another life going west. Go on, should we watch him die? <laughs> That's an interesting looking spot, brilliant looking spot to be there. Well designed, well designed. Come on then, off you go. <laughs> I've run out of time so I'm not going to try. Splat. <laughs> well, here we go, last life, last attempt and see if we can get off this level. And if I don't get off this level, I won't get off this level, basically. So activate the notes, collect all the notes. It seems fairly simple. Oh, I can't do that now because the notes are too far apart. You need to try and get it in one go. In fact, I very much doubt I'll be able to do that. Just give me, just let me collect that one, just a little bit higher. <laughs>
I think the key is to try and get them all down on one side. I might do that because I might be able to swing from the one notes over there and bounce. Yes! 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 yes. I'm telling you this game is evilly hard. Evilly hard. This one's a little bit easier. Those are conveyor belts, right? So I'm gonna run out of time. Come on then, do the count. Yeah, them conveyor belts are quite quick as well, aren't they? Yeah, I've done it. That was actually easier than the last level. That was actually easier than the last level. Oh mate, your time is fast here. You've really got to be super fast here. Oh, nearly. Oh, that last jump is me. Okay, well, we got a slightly intense change of AY tune there. Um, I like the game. It's great. It's really hard. It's really playable, though, and it's very addictive. It's, uh, I've got to say, I'm going to give that one an 8 out of 10 worth for play. I'll try and get links on where you can download it and give it a go. That's something new for the Spectrum. The Blue Notes! How old Marvin? And the Blue Notes. Um, I don't think Harold Marvin's got anything to do with it, but why, what a quiet band that was back in the day. Yeah, well done. Great production, great game. Really enjoyed playing it. Next up on the uh, Retro Robins playlist is this little beauty. Well, I say little beauty. It looks a bit dark, that does, doesn't it? Um... Oh, it's a bit of bleep of work going on in the background there. Yeah, that is beeper. Indeed, this has got a 48k start to it. And I believe it works in both 48k and 128k. Um, yeah, hell boy by the... Hell... I don't know whether that's meant to be a J, but I, I'll just say hell boy for the hell of it. Um, screen boy cats. You've got the free usual. Yeah, us done the beeper and you can see his name in the top and uh, the AY there is by that guy. Uh, I need to get into him to see if he wants to be commissioned to do some work for me. And you can tell that to us. That's phenomenal work. There are three amazing people uh, that are doing some awesome things. Um, us, Richard, uh, the Bleeper Hitman Hollins, who's done stuff for the show as well, and um, that later, last album that I reviewed uh, with Brett from Bapstar's Arcade. Um, fantastic. But let's give this game a go. Okay, so we've got to not hit the pill looking thing, we just go to uh, jump over that, have we? Well, we've got to try and, yeah, whoops. Get to the E, opens the gate, pop down the level. Oh, it's a pattern recognition game. Once I got to the E, you open the gate, you're able to move on. Oh, you didn't get me, that's good, okay, so. Um, oh, I hit the. Doesn't matter because I've got this far. Yeah, you've got to just basically remember where everything is. Oh, I've got to jump onto that, have I? Okay. Jumping across, I've got to get to that E to open the exit, that's what that E stands for. It's a stationary sprite when it's not moving. 
There's no animation in there until you move it. There's a couple of stages, three stages of animation. I've got to the exit. There isn't a time limit by the looks of it from when you can get out. So you can be a little bit patient if you want. You do have to remember the sequence of uh, things going around. Some of the jumps are trickier than others. For instance, that one is not easy. And uh, there we go, we're out of that particular section of the game. Oh, I did jump too early, that's why I died. Might not have caught that on camera, but as I moved, I hit me and, uh, yeah, that was the end of Retro Robin, I'm afraid. This bit is very tricky, very tricky indeed, because somehow you've got to have, you've got to watch the pattern of him, and effectively you've got to try and follow him, I think, really. And once you follow him, you can uh, get into that corner and then get out of that corner pretty quickly. It's easier said than done to follow him, I promise you that. Oops. Well, I've done it now. There we go. Oof. We'll have a big blockade there to, to get through. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> well, at least we've got the exit open. Two lives left. Is he going to actually be freed? I don't know whether we can get it through down here. It's going to be hard trying to get past him while he's in that passageway, so I presume. Maybe if I a little bit more patience, uh, we can get through and, and past him. Yeah, so when he bounces round first time, jump up and then make a move for him. No! No, that wasn't the case. I'm down to my last life. Staying here is fairly safe. So the first time he goes down there, jump up and jump up again because he'll go down there a second time. I get you. Right, okay. So this time he jumped. Ah, oh, I jumped too early. <laughs> um, right, yeah, it's okay. Um, just a tricky type maze game, really, where timing is essential. Um, Great beat per music at the start, phenomenal work. The AY tune's okay, the graphics are average, I'll be honest with you. The, the, the level designs are not bad at all. Um, Mark's out of 10, I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. Um, I wasn't too overly keen on it. Don't think it is one that I will be going back to play on a regular basis. I might just give it a nostalgia blast maybe in 5 years time to see if I can do any better than I just did. but. I'll definitely leave links on where you can download this, uh, of course, and uh, give it a go, tell me what you think, and maybe it's one you think, uh, it's not for you, not yet. As always, please leave a comment. Last game of the day. Baby Man versus Nappy Bird. <laughs> well, after the last piece of music we've just heard, this is a bit of an anticlimax. It sounds a bit. Um, great loading screen, though. The loading screen is very well done indeed. I love the artwork on that. And then we come up with the four options. To which we're going to go for my favourite beloved Kempston. Press fire to start. Yeah, okay. So what we've got now is we've got a flappy bird uh, type of game. And uh, a little bit easier because usually by the third or fourth one. Block 
blocky graphics for the clouds, which, you know, blocky graphics for the background. And, uh, yeah, I am actually playing this. 12! Score of 12. Give it one more go. Mm. And that time, that's the score I got. Um, marked out of 10, well, I'm not a fan. I've got Flappy Clive for that sort of thing, and there's been other plenty. I think the whole Flappy Bird concept has been done and dusted. I don't like it, to be honest. Yeah, I know it's a, it's a follow-up to a game, Baby Man, the other one that he did. But it's okay, but the clouds were just blocks of white. The background were just blocks of blue. Put some graphics there, for goodness sake, you know, and make it a little bit more interesting. But, you know, I hate to be harsh on games, but what was the point? It was a lot easier than Flappy Bird, which is defeating the point. Flappy Bird was frustrating because it was so difficult just to get one or two. This was a lot easier. In fact, Flappy Clive was slightly harder, but I got Flappy Clive for that. Which means today... Where show is over. So, thank you for watching if you've stuck with me for this long. And uh, if you haven't already, please uh, leave a like and leave a comment even. <laughs> Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Big thank you to Richard the Bleeper Hitman Hollins, to Lee Chop Stevens, to Jeff, who's provided the latest game for a crash cover tape on a demo version, which is now available, hopefully is available, from Fusion Retro Books. A big shout out to Matthew Logue and Babstars Arcade Richard Volkner, Andy from RMC and anybody else that knows me. So until we meet again, do hope you enjoyed today's show from me, Wayne Retro Robbins, and from Emo, depending on when you watch this. Please have a nice working week or weekend. In the meantime, you take care. Hello.